What do you think it's significant for us to understand about who Comey is? Well, uh, to their credit, the senators did ask some of the questions, especially the ones that focused on James Comey's authorization of uh, waterboarding and sleep deprivation. And uh, especially that question, I think, was asked and answered. It wasn't answered very well, but it was uh, because James Comey claimed now that it's illegal. It's, it's progress over Mukasey, who's, who denied that waterboarding is torture. Uh, but he could not really explain why he had signed off on these uh, authorities for CIA uh, that included sleep deprivation and waterboarding. So the senators did an okay job of asking some of the questions. James Comey hedged on most of those. He did not answer those. He would claim that he did not know or the information was classified, especially that hospital standoff question. He um, claimed that that is still classified, and he could not explain what changed and why he objected objected to uh, the warrantless monitoring beforehand, but then went along with it afterwards. Well, during Tuesday's confirmation hearing for the FBI nominee, uh, director nominee, James Comey, he was asked about his approval in 2004 of a legal memo that authorized torture techniques designed to inflict pain or terror during the interrogation of detainees. Comey was deputy attorney general at the time. The memo was known as the Bradbury Memo. You, you talked about how sleep prep, uh, deprivation can be uh, torture, I th and I think you said in combination with other methods. Um, this is what the Bradbury memo says about sleep deprivation. In this method, the detainee is standing in his handcuffs, and the handcuffs are attached by a length of chain to the ceiling. The detainee's hands are shackled in front of his body so that the detainee has approximately a two to three foot diameter of movement. The detainee's feet are shackled to a bolt in the floor, end quote. The memo also says that the detainee wears diapers and that sleep deprivation can cause swelling in the lower extremities. The memo goes on to say that none of this amounts to torture and authorized sleep deprivation for up to 180 hours. That's seven and a half days. That is torture, isn't it? Uh, that was my reaction, and, and I remember that description vividly. Senator, it's one of the things that led me to ask, who are we as Americans? And we have to have that conversation about even if someone says it's effective, someone says it doesn't violate this vague statute, there's this third question that that description cries out for us to answer. Okay. Uh, I'm out of time, but I would say that was a memo that you, that you approved. Now, that was one of separate... Um, uh, separate methods that was talked about in that one. That was the first Bradbury. That was James Comey being questioned by Senator Al Franken. Colleen Rowley, could you respond to that? Well, the senators uh, generally lauded James Comey for uh, obeying and upholding the law, and they claimed that he had spoken truth to power. But this episode where he signed off on waterboarding and sleep deprivation, and I will just interject that I'm very proud that Minnesota Senator Al Franken uh, gave the graphic, gruesome description of what sleep deprivation actually is, because maybe if some of these officials had understood that, they would not have signed off as this being legal. Uh, James Comey also claimed that the, the statute, the 1994 statute prohibiting torture in the United States is vague. Uh, in fact, there's a convention against torture that the United States has signed, and almost all experts claim uh, say that that statute is very clear. And so uh, there is a, a real strong irony, irony here that the new, pro probably the new FBI director, actually uh, signed off on a completely uh, illegal method of in interrogating uh, pr uh, prisoners. Talking to former FBI agent Colleen Rowley, named by Time magazine um, uh, as person of the year, um, I wanted to go uh, back to the Comey hearing uh, and back to the questioning of uh, Senator uh, Al Franken, uh, this about the case of Jose Padilla. Uh, Jose Padilla pronounces his name in that way, as opposed to Jose Padilla. He had changed his name, the U.S. citizen who was held as an enemy combatant by the George W. Bush administration. For over three years, Padilla was held without charge in solitary confinement on a military brig in South Carolina. Do American citizens always have the right 
to talk to an attorney when they are detained, uh, when, when they are detained by their own government when, on, on American soil. And I'm, I suppose one of the reasons you may not have been satisfied is I'm not sure I'm, I was expert enough, or still am, to give you a, a, a really good answer to that. I think the answer is yes, except when that person is detained as a prisoner of war in an ongoing armed conflict. That, the, that as a prisoner of war, the person does not have a constitutional right to counsel. I think that was the position uh, that the Justice Department took in Mr. Padilla or Padilla's case. Um, and so I, I think that is the position. And who determines whether that person is a prisoner of war, an American citizen? Right. Uh, on American soil, was arrested on American soil. Who makes that determination? And doesn't that person have a, an American citizen now, mm -hmm. have a right to an attorney to make the case that I'm not a prisoner of war? Well, they certainly have a right to access to the courts, as was done in that case, to file a habeas corpus petition to challenge the president's decision that that in designation that person is involved in an armed conflict with the United States. Um, but the, and so that's a different question from whether they have a constitutional right to have a lawyer. I think the district judge in that case said that as a matter of um, his ability to oversee habeas corpus petitions, he thought the person ought to have a lawyer to, to uh, assist him in the preparation of that petition. I don't think the judge found he had a constitutional right to counsel. Okay, I'm and as you said, it's a one-off horrific case that was a very difficult one. So it's, it's obviously not a settled area because I don't know that it's ever happened other than in Padilla's case. That's the FBI director nominee, James Comey, being questioned again by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota. Colleen Rowley, uh, you taught um, the FBI and police constitution, uh, the Constitution, and you were an agent for years. Your response to what he said and what else you feel we should know about James Comey? Well, uh, James Comey was the official that held a press conference uh, and strongly defended the ability of the United States to use this law of war and to hold enemy combatants incommunicado. Uh, of course, in Padilla's case, he was held for nearly three years and, uh, I think, two years without an attorney. So, um, and, and actually, because uh, James Comey spoke once in Minnesota with Walter Mondale and Walter Mondale asked him about that case. Uh, James Comey went a step further <clears throat> in 2009, and this was in my questions in the New York Times op-ed. He actually said that we have to have an ability to incapacitate suspects when there is not adequate evidence to, to use in court, or a foreign government gives the United States evidence that needs to be secret. So he's, in 2009, which came quite a long time afterwards, he is still defending this concept of uh, indefinite detention without the right, not only the right to attorney, but even the right to uh, be adjudicated in a criminal court. And what exactly did he mean by incapacitate? Well, he, he made a, a, a reference to the way that we can hold mentally ill uh, people uh, through a different process rather than adjudicating criminal guilt. And he said if there's a way to hold uh, the mentally dangerous in, in, uh, without, so that they're not, um, so that we can maintain safety, there must be a way to do this with, uh, with dangerous uh, terrorist suspects. During Tuesday's Senate confirmation hearing, FBI Director nominee James Comey was also asked about domestic surveillance. He insisted that the Secret Foreign Service Intelligence Act, or FISA court, provided effective congressional oversight. Uh, I, I think that folks don't understand that the FBI operates under a wide variety of constraints, starting with the Attorney General's detailed guidelines on how it's to conduct intelligence investigations, criminal investigations, and counterintelligence investigations. I think sometimes folks also, also don't understand what the FISA court is. They hear secret court. Uh, sometimes they hear rubber stamp. Uh, in my experience, which is long with the FISA court, uh, folks don't realize that it's a group of independent federal judges who sit and operate under a statutory regime to review requests by the government to use certain authorities to gather information, and it is anything but a rubber stamp. Anyone who knows federal judges and has appeared before federal judges knows that uh, calling them a rubber stamp is, um, shows you don't have experience before them. 
That was FBI nominee James Comey. The FISA court issued almost 1,800 surveillance orders last year. Every single government request was approved. Colleen Rowley, your response to what Comey said. Yes, and this, and this number of FISA court orders is it over double what it was before 9-11. Uh, there's a huge difference between when a criminal court carefully analyzes probable cause uh, for purposes of monitoring and what the FISA court does. I will go back to that hospital room standoff, because I think there's a piece that the, that the public does not understand about James Comey's uh, famous hospital standoff. He was not objecting to the massive data collection as much as he was just objecting to the legal footing of what had uh, what was probably John Yu's theory of unbridled executive power and the ability to override the FISA statute to override Congress. It looks like there was a period of time before the FISA court got this blanket authority under the FISA Amendments Act to uh, to give uh, to rubber stamp uh, orders for uh, blanket orders for everyone's telephone and email data. It looks like there was a period of time where James Comey uh, authorized. Uh, went along with Bush's massive data collection under a new theory. Uh, Goldsmith's theory was that it was pegged to the authorization to use military force. And when they used that authorization to use military force, of course, to repeal parts of the FISA, none of the Congress would have understood that when they voted back in October 2001 to authorize um, the United States to go to war in Afghanistan, that they were also repealing a part of the uh, solid uh, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act law. FBI nominee James Comey also discussed his position on whistleblowing. I think whistleblowers are also a critical element of a functioning democracy. Folks have to feel free to raise their concerns, and if they're not addressed, up their chain of command to take them to an appropriate place. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, Colleen Rowley. Uh, here we are talking about this, and uh, as Edward um, Snowden is, we believe, still on the Russian airport applying for political asylum in many different countries, uh, the, the uh, Democratic senator is congratulating um, Comey for his questioning of the wireless wiretapping, uh, of uh, a warrantless wiretapping. And yet you, you don't see anything like their same response when it comes to questioning what President Obama has been doing with the NSA. That's, that's right. Um, they did ask Comey some good questions about the uh, law that allows the government to read emails after six months, and they asked some questions about pending legislation to fix the NSA. Comey uh, kind of um, hedged on those questions and said he, he could not really offer an opinion. Uh, the, the, the key thing here is that Comey did not really oppose warrantless monitoring, and actually uh, looks like he just uh, wanted the the legal underpinnings to be adjusted. And, and as far as whistleblowers, of course, in the FBI, and as well as many of these other intelligence agencies, there's no recourse in court. You never get your day in court. So, of course, uh, uh, Senator Grassley mentioned this. There's no other option for people who witness true illegality, as Edward Snowden did. Uh, what do you do when you're witnessing uh, violations of the Constitution, and there is no internal chain of command or mechanism to get that information out. And Comey, of course, uh, I don't think is, is uh, uh, not going to answer that, because he doesn't want to prejudice the, the, the situation right now of the government prosecuting uh, Edward Snowden.